Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how to make your own cute little spirally earrings using a bead. Now you could not use a bead, it's the same technique here, you know, kind of works for whatever you want to do, but the core of it is uh, the, this kind of inline spiral that I'm going to show you guys how to make. So I'm using 20 gauge para wire. It's a um, silver plated copper core that's then covered with their enamel. Um, that way you don't have to worry about it tarnishing or irritating you if you have sensitive skin. Um, you can make your own ear hooks or you can use these are 301 surgical steel. They're all there are links <laughs> to all the different tools and materials down in the video description and those are affiliate links so anything that you purchase through there greatly benefits our company. So let's go ahead and get oh I also have really just either flat or bent nose pliers and round nose pliers, but I wanted to show you the difference between using my regular round nose and then my super fine tipped round nose pliers. There's the kind of differences that we can get with spirals. Um, so I have about eight or nine inches cut twice of the 20 gauge wire and I'm gonna come in and we're gonna do a spiral you putting our fingers together like this and you can actually test it out on a little piece of scrap so you just it's kind of the itsy bitsy spider where you put one finger and then the other together kind of doing this motion it's putting the two fingers together and then twisting like that so practice that motion um and then so we just have a little piece of scrap here. It helps if you can hold on to both ends because you'll want to stabilize them. But we'll just put those two fingers together. Whoops. And then twist. So you can see that got us a very nice little loop. And what I like about this is, for, at least for me, it remains consistent. And it gets me a nice tight little loop with no risk of denting my soft wire with my plier tips or anything like that. And it actually gets it a little bit tighter than what it would if I were using even um, my fine tipped pliers. Let's see. Yeah, I'd have to use the very tippy tip, which that's such a risk of it just sliding right off. So once we've practiced on some scrap wire, let's come in. And for this earring design, I'm going to start my twist if we split our wire up into thirds at kind of a one third mark. So again, I'm holding both ends and placing this first one we're gonna do, I have my right hand on top. So place and twist. And so, see how that got a nice little, and I'm not gonna lie, para wire's affordable enough that um, you can really get some practice and you don't have to worry about, <clears throat> you know, I, I wouldn't recommend starting this off with your, uh, you know, silver, silver uh, sterling silver wire. And so now we're going to do the other one, just so that I don't forget. <laughs> and we're going to have the same location, one third of the way in, but I'm going to have my left hand be on top. And you can see that kind of tightens down. And it makes us a very nice little mirror image. Because with earrings, I like to have them mirror imaged instead of as opposed to identical and that's the hardest part for me is getting them to be you know mirror images of each other so now i'm going to continue placing my fingers and just wrapping the long end around and this is how i like to make inline spirals and you can use either your flat or bent nose to kind of keep it flat <laughs> and then i just grip with my fingers or you can hold on to the other end and just keep training this longer wire all the way around. And you can make this spiral for days. Like you can make a honking huge spiral if you want. It's entirely up to you and how much wire you have. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to leave it at that size. I'm pretty happy with that. And so now we're going to take to the other side. And I always look at the backs to make sure because you don't really see this wire branching off. Let me zoom in just a little bit, hopefully, so y'all can see better. I apologize in advance if I go out of frame. I'm a jewelry maker, not a video maker at heart, so I'm trying my best. Uh, but you can kind of see how 
the back side, and you could have this be the front too, but for me, I'm having this be the back, how that little wire branches off there, whereas on the front, it looks kind of like magic. Um, <laughs> so let's continue branching this one around. And it can help, I find, to actually just do even more of that itsy bitsy spider, but to just, you can feel which wire that you're using. I guess instead of spider, it's itsy bitsy spiral. <laughs> And then comparing them side by side. They're not quite the same size yet. So I'm going to do one more wrap around. And you could do this, you could do a whole earring of just uh, inline spirals, just kind of vined together like that. Yeah, but now they don't really, huh. <laughs> One's bigger than the other now. So let's see if maybe if we twist that around, we can get the orientation of the back wire to be the same, maybe. So yeah, if we focus on making these spirals the same size, then we can kind of point our wires off in whatever direction we need them to be. Okay, so right there they look to be the same size so i'm going to take this one and branch that wire just up a bit this is an art not a science <laughs> and so there we are and again maybe instead of symmetrical we'll go with sisters and not twins um oops and i threw it before of course i threw it so I'm actually going to, on this back side, swing this one round just a little bit more. Because I like the effect that that gets better than bending it the other way. And seeing as it's just wire, it is super durable. So, yeah, that worked out pretty well. And it cinched down that center loop even more. <clears throat> so now from here, we could add a bead if you wanted. Um, you could completely knot. If you were to just knot, what I would do is, we'll actually do it on this one. So yeah, I find that if you do the itsy bitsy uh, spiral multiple times, as opposed to just spinning it around, it makes spirals on both sides. So that's where that discrepancy came from. So we're just going to do a little one right here. So we've built our spiral and we can come in with, let's use our large round nose pliers. Let's get the camera to focus too, that'd be good. And so I'm going to come in and just make a little spiral, which is really just a loop. We didn't have a whole lot of wire to work with going in one direction and then having this one come around and I'm going to use my small pliers for that and grab just as close to the tip of the wire and as close to the tip of the pliers as I can. Now I really only like these very petite pliers for using at the tip like this for 20 gauge because otherwise if I try to bend like here we have some 16 gauge just scraps it in here if I try to bend that watch out how the tips distort. Oh, come on. So see how it actually twists the nose of my pliers. So these aren't, these are for delicate work for sure. <clears throat> but on the 20 gauge, they work pretty perfectly. Now, once we've gotten that far, I'm going to grab here and here and the dogs are going to start barking because I think there's a school bus outside. Um, oh, maybe not. <laughs> and so there's one little and you could actually, if you had enough wire, this was just a bit of scrap on the table, but you could make like a little leaf camera. So help me. I think the autofocus is off. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but you could make like a little leaf shape with your spiral. You could add like a little charm hanging off of it. Like, I don't know. I think this would be really cool for a lot of different things. You could attach a ring to each end. I'd hammer it first a bit. Um, but 
actually let's see how this looks hammered before I show you guys how to add beads because if you're adding beads you're gonna want to do your hammering before um, you add your beads because you really you don't want to do all this work and then you know break the bead so I have it's a steel block with a rubber base it's supposed to help I say supposed but it does actually help with the sound um, but not on this table as much it helps on like a very sturdy work surface and then I have uh, a jeweler's hammer this is a 13 ounce and I'm gonna start with the nylon head because you have to be careful where the wire overlays itself if you hammer it too much it'll start to pinch and get thin in spots where the where the two wires cross will get very thin at that crossing point so it can make brittle sections but I'm just gonna come through it's gonna be quite loud possibly and so We've hammered it down just a bit because I don't want to get too much of a pinch going in this area. And now I'm going to come in with the metal side and hold on to here. And I'm just going to hammer out and spread that 20 gauge. Oops. There we are. And so now we have a nice little spiral and then the flattened bit which I think really catches the light nicely so yeah this this actually works out pretty well for uh, hammering it got a little distorted like out of line so I'm going to grab here and here and boop, just straighten it out a bit and I absolutely love that okay so now let's figure out how to add a bead so we have our earrings I'm going to add the bead on the slightly longer end and so let's make, do hmm. you guys want to, I'm going to show y'all how to make another inline. So <clears throat> I want the wire to be on top. So I'm going to have my left hand. I don't know. Let's kind of see. We can start to shape it around. Yeah, there we go. Just like that. And so this is how I just kind of vine different like the spirals together and you could have it be very tight like this one but this one i'm going to do a little messy there's uh, spirals are essentially at their core a simplistic technique like it's the same core foundation but you can add so many different variations to it but yeah you can just scooch them side by side and so now we have two little vined inline spirals right next to each other and so I'm going to take one of these round beads, that way you can see how it looks with a faceted, this is a 4x4mm four four wide by 6 like 4 millimeter by 6 millimeter uh, faceted rondel bead. I don't think I pronounced that correctly. And this is just a 4 millimeter ball socket. But we'll just slide that right on too. You can use any bead that you want, as long as it fits on your wire. That's the only inhibition here. And the wire's coming around to this side, so I'm going to keep that kind of flow going. And I'm just going to bring it around. It's like making the itsy bitsy spiral thing, but with a bead in the way. And I actually kind of like it because the bead gives us something to hold on to. And if you're using even a 22 gauge wire, something that I recommend doing is bringing it out just a little bit through the wire and then feeding it up through the back side, through right there, that little, little space. And I'm going to use, this is where I come in with my bent nose pliers and grab and just kind of pull it through. And it's going to make it a little bit more spacious possibly. You can really try to cinch it down. And then just smooshing it around into another tiny little smoosh um, loop like that. And you'll want to experiment with this. You'll find you'll find what works best for you, I think. And so now from here, I'm gonna snip about a finger length. Oh yeah, you'll need wire cutters. <laughs> snip, and then coming in with our petite round nose just cinching it on around. I use my finger to support on the back 
because if I don't, sometimes there's a little piece of scrap that I can use. Some quick troubleshooting is if you're making a spiral and you don't have something flat for it to go against, sometimes your spirals will build three-dimensionally. Like, ah, what's happening here? And it's because it doesn't have anything to force it into a 2D, you know, just a flat. So whereas if we press with, against our finger, you could even use the table. Just something to press against and then turn. And it's going to, by having something to press your pliers against, it's going to help keep your spiral in one plane. So that's why I put my finger on the back side. And then spin it on around. It's a little bit of like a vroom vroom motion, if that makes sense. Um, and then once I get far enough in, I'm just going to grab it. It's very important that your pliers don't have teeth. That way they're not marking up your wire when you're cinching, grabbing down on it. And you can just kind of position everything to however pleases you best. And then this one, I think I'm going to leave it that long. If I were, let's go ahead and do what we've done so far on the other side. So I'm going to come in and I, I'm actually going to use my thumbnail to put a little bit of a bend. That way the, the loop will happen where I want it to. And so now I can itsy bitsy spiral fingers twist around and it goes right where I wanted it to go by doing that initial bend it kind of uh, trains it into position and now I'm just wrapping this wire around wrap, wrap, wrap. and they're a little farther apart from each other than what I would have liked so I'm gonna just curl it in a little bit more holding this one stable and grabbing this spiral I cinch in the back, adding a little bit of a curl there. And so now, do I add another loop to this? Hmm. It's the same number of rotations, but this one came out tighter than that one did. That's just life. It's okay. And that's why I take as good of pictures as I can from every angle from my Etsy listings, because that way if somebody sees it, and they're like, oh my god, I love it. Like, they love it for all the imperfections and everything. And if not, then they just don't buy it. And that's fine. So now I'm going to bring this wire here. Whoop, holding tight here. And then just cinching it to where I want it to be. And now I'm going <clears> to... <throat> Do you match? Yeah. Slide on our 4 millimeter moss agate. And now again, the spiral, it's coming this way, so I'm going to bring it around this way, and I want the wire to be on the front, because that's how it is on this side. Uh, sorry, it's, I guess I made the mistake of recording when there were humans um, existing, so my dog's barking. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear him. <clears throat> and so now it's coming around, uh, and I'm just going to bring the end in here. Now this is another instance where I could try to get it a little bit and I'm going to put a little bit of a bend just right there. Right there in the wire. That way as we grab it with our pliers hopefully the wire will... nope I did it too close. Uh, anyways it still worked. Um, the idea is, is if we do a little training point <clears throat> then it'll go ahead and settle down there. Again, it's an art, not a science. And so now we're going to come down. And if you have a little bit of kinks and things, you can use some handy-dandy nylon gel pliers. And just grip and pull. And that straightens out your wire. Now that will stiffen up your wire a little bit, oops, too, so that's something to keep in mind. Did I do this one with my petite? Yeah. 
and now again yeah so I'll be curling this one in this way that way they still mirror image of each other just grab in right there bring it around and oops and that happens sometimes my pliers will get in the way and it'll put a little bit of a bend there which is perfect if you want like um, like a leaf shape or something but if you don't want that I just bring the spiral out a little bit and smush and straighten and then I'm just gonna grip with my pliers it's like I crank it around grip it and bring it in so again I'm not that great at getting uh, this everything to be like perfect 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 symmetrical but that's okay it's if it's not like perfectly symmetrical the term I use is organic because <laughs> it is it's like um you know very few things in nature will be perfectly replicated so I kind of feel like it lends itself to the maybe earthy feel and so I'm glad that I had waited to trim this wire because if I had done this one first um and made it you know with all that wire that's still hanging off the end uh the end spirals would not have looked the same so now I'm just going to hold these guys up side by side and give it a snip just like that and now we can come in and make more spirals Just like that and so this one by doing the inline uh, the second spiral it made it a little bit longer but I think that shows some of the natural variation that can occur just between using different bead styles or no bead um, adding more loops hammering not hammering like with this one technique you could even do um, you know like uh, different colored wires and stuff and I think we'll explore in a future follow-up tutorial doing this design using two wires at once because I think that would be really fun and it's an excellent way to get like a if you want to mix like silver and copper are one of or two of my favorite tones to be able to mix together because um, <clears throat> none of my jewelry is the same metal tone like even some of my sterling silver like you know some of it will be bright and shiny and some of it will be like really cool patina that I don't want to polish off because I think it looks neat so if I just make it different color, like metals, different metal types everywhere, then it looks like I did it on purpose and not like, you know, I'm just a crazy bad lady. Um, you know, which, you know, let's not deny reality. Um, so I need to cinch this one in a little bit more because while I don't mind some variation in the spiral shapes, I do want the length to be the same. So to do that, I'm just going to grab it and cinch it in a bit more. And that's, that is acceptable. <laughs> I like that actually. Uh, and so now we could come through with our ear hooks and just open up the little loop that's on them. And I'm just gonna hook through right here. Well, that's backwards. Hook through right there. And if there's not enough space, like it's a little pinched up on the area that I want it to hang so I'm just going to take my pliers and open up that spiral a little bit more that way it'll hang freely just like that now we can position a little bit more get it to be nice and straight now that we see how it's going to hang and those are just some fun little spiral earrings Oops, pile of pliers. Same thing to the other side. Hmm. Now this one's very, like very up on itself. So I'm just going to pull that down just a little bit. And you see it makes that space that now our ear hook will fit through. So I'm going to take that and close that. 
And there are some very fun little earrings. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I love hearing from y'all. Uh, if you enjoy my tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, and you've already liked, shared, subscribed, rung my bell, all that good stuff, um, you can feel free to check us out on Patreon. We do, uh, at the time of recording, we've just upgraded to where uh, on our $1 tier, you get all sorts of behind the scenes content, and as well as a patron exclusive live stream on Saturdays, 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, and then for our $5 tier, we do like digital download content. So like our jewelry display templates, our leatherworking templates. I do like mandala art for like, um, you know, like coloring pages and stuff. Uh, and then for our $10 tier, uh, international, like just continental. We're not able to offer it for international because shipping's like $13. Um, but we do cab boxes and then we also do like our $20 and up craft along kits, uh, that are a different project every month and typically have an accompanying video. But I don't know, it's very fun. It's our little craft along club. Um, and I thought I'd let y'all know about it. We also have an Etsy shop and we're on all sorts of, uh, well, I say all sorts, but really just Facebook and Instagram for social media. But if you guys want to share uh, pictures of your work, Instagram is the place to do it if you're into that. Like, a, like you can tag me or do hashtag craft along with Vaughn. And then not just me, but anybody who searches that tag can see your work. And I think it's a great way to kind of up, uh, up exposure of like, you know, because I'm limited so much by what I do as an artist. I, I really enjoy, you know, so showing you guys, hey, I did this thing, and then seeing what y'all do with it, because y'all come up with stuff that I would have never, you know, in, in the 11 years I've been making jewelry, I would have never thought of that. And it's, y'all inspire me every day. So thank you so much for, oh, this video ended up way longer than I meant for it to. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> well, thanks for hanging out with me, guys. Um, I will see y'all in our next video. And until next time, happy crafting. Mwah. Bye. <laughs>